you have to stop and say, do I believe in what's going on? And for those of you who are Christians, who are believers following along right now, what I'm asking you to do is to make sure that your compass and your true north is scripture that you go to scripture, that you look there and say, okay, what is it that 1 Corinthians 13 is teaching me about love? Am I able to place myself into that narrative? Am I engaging in conversation in my closest relationships out of this ethic of love? Welcome to Let's Be Real, a completely honest, entirely practical conversation about how to live our lives with freedom, purpose, and abundance. Popular author and communicator Nicole Yunus brings her 20 years of experience as a counselor, pastor, and coach to a real conversation about the tricky questions and tough decisions in life, and how to find clarity in action no matter what obstacle you may face. Have a topic to suggest or a tricky situation you need help with? We'd love to hear from you. Send us an email or voice memo to Nicole at NicoleYunis.com. We might feature you on the show. And now here's your host, Nicole Yunus. I've got some things on my heart that I've wanted a chance to lead you guys through. I've been praying a lot about this and um, talking to a lot of people, listening to a lot of my friends, and just really wanted to take a few minutes and have a space where we can engage and where you feel like you can ask any questions that you want to ask. And I want to just say... This is a safe place to ask those questions. I know what it can feel like, particularly if you are um, new to this conversation or if you're white and you haven't engaged with this conversation at all. I know that one of the things that can be so uncomfortable is feeling like you don't you you just feel uncomfortable asking questions because you don't know if your question is offensive or you don't know if your question is ignorant. And um, I don't know what it is about us adults, but we hate feeling like we're gonna like step in something hard or we're gonna like you know have a um we're gonna say something that's not intelligent or we're gonna speak out of turn or somehow like offend someone but honestly you guys we're not in a season right now where that is our number one concern like our number one concern has to be the moment that we're in and that means kind of getting a little bit uncomfortable with asking those kinds of questions. So I want you to feel safe here that I want this space to be a space where you can ask what you need to ask or if you have a comment or a thought about what you're seeing going on in the world, in your community, in your life, in your own heart, um, you can share that and you can do that with respect that we would respect each other. So let's be real today. Our conversation is how to be civil and disobedient. I want to talk about what that means and I really want to say first and foremost, I am not not an expert in any way in policy, in politics, in racial reconciliation. I am not an expert. I do not. I come to you guys as a human being like you all are, which means there's stuff that I don't know. There's stuff that I don't understand. There's stuff that I'm still confused about. Um, I, I, I'm educating myself, but it's not like I'm sitting here wanting to be an expert in any way about this conversation. The lane that I want to stay in and that I want to bring to you guys today is the lane of human hearts and and how it works to join hearts with other people because that's that's my specialty that's my expertise is in dynamics of humans and what is going on and so i want to share just some of my thoughts from that place Um, because if you're just on social media it's literally like the world has imploded and uh, you know i was just with a friend and they're like is there still a pandemic is there just riots now like there's no there's no we feel like like just when we thought that things could not be any more confusing or difficult they are and i think those things are actually related I want to talk about that in a moment. But um, what I want to make sure that we do today is for me to say, first and foremost, I am not an expert in racial reconciliation. I am not in any way sitting in a seat where I feel like I can bring you expertise. But what I do want to say is that my expertise or, or my lane or my passion is specifically to you as believers. So if you are believers, followers of Jesus, or you're approaching um, Jesus as a way of life, you're trying to understand what it means to follow Jesus, I want to talk to you guys who are believers about this moment in time and this moment that we're in in history. And I want to give you a chance to ask questions or to make your own comments about what you're seeing and experiencing because we're seeing and experiencing a lot. And if you you're, 
If your mode of operating is to try to diagnose and understand what is going on, I, I, I just, there, it's so much and it's so complex that if you're thinking, I'm going to be able to just sort of make a judgment call on what's going on right now, if you have not been engaged in this conversation, or even honestly, if you have been engaged in the conversation, we are in a moment that we've never been in before. You know, I, I wrote a, a statement for an organization that I'm in leadership with, and, you know, we have not had a pandemic in 100 years, we've never experienced anything like this in our lifetimes. We have an invisible force in our world that's been going on in our country since the beginning of our country. And we're, we're kind of, those things are coming together and we're experiencing this moment in time where people really feel, I believe, out of control. And there's a sense that like the, the rhythms and the frameworks, good or bad, have been removed. 30 million people are out of work. We are in an, we're in an invisible fight with a virus we don't understand and, and can't contain. And we're not sure what who to listen to and what's right and what's wrong. We were experiencing this uprising of a simmering problem that's been going on. I do know that um, for many years, pr- many people would say, including myself, since the beginning of our country, that has come to a boiling point. All of this, the humans are in this moment where we feel out of control. And so this is a moment where more than any other time, we need to return as believers to our highest ethic. What is it that Christ teaches us about who we listen to and how we do understand the times that we're living in? You know, that is a part of our calling is to is to interpret the times. We are called to that work as Christians. We're not called to just remove ourselves from all of it and kind of cloister together. We're called to be in it. And so I want to speak for a few moments from that place. Philippians 3.20 says that we are citizens of heaven. So I want to speak from a place where all of us as believers in the spiritual realm, our citizenship is now in heaven. We are not of this world, but we live in this world. We're called to this world. We are called to be light in the world, but our actual citizenship is not here. We, we, we serve a higher call. And so when we think about a moment like this and we want to interpret the times we're in, we do have a higher ethic. There is there is a priority in scripture in the way that we understand the ethic of living. And many, many times we can mix Christianity with churchianity, with culture, with what we've perceived as a Christian country in America, which I I do not believe that we are a Christian country. I don't think there is anything. The citizenship of our hearts and our souls is in heaven. We have a heavenly citizenship, but we have to live in this world and interpret what's going on right now. So I I believe that if you are a believer, you are called to an ethic and a priority, and there is a higher ethic that sort of informs the way that we then choose to live. So that higher ethic is the greatest commandment found in Matthew. It's It's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke when Jesus is asked by religious leaders who are trying to interpret the times. They're trying to understand, are we supposed to come under Caesar? Are we supposed to uh, uh, like respect the Roman government? Are you going to come establish your earthly kingdom? They're asking these kinds of questions. They're asking the questions truly of justice and truth. And Jesus says to them, the greatest commandment is this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. All the prophets and law hang on these two commandments. So even though we are interpreting the times, we have been given a higher ethic that is laid out for us in scripture. The highest ethic is not individual freedom in the sense of like, I have my right to my opinion. That's not actually the highest ethic in scripture. Now, it may feel like all those things mixed together in our sort of American complex world, but the highest ethic that we are called to is the way of love. That is the way of Jesus, is the way of love. And then there are places in scripture in all through the New Testament where we learn what it means to live out that love. So that higher ethic is based and determined out of the way that we love. So one thing that I want us to make sure we understand is that we need to determine if what we're supporting or what we're saying is out of love for people or if it's out of love for something else. 
We can have many loves in our life. This is what idolatry is. And oftentimes in moments like this, when we get uncomfortable, when we have to start saying like, wait a second, what is it that I believe? Do I, what do I think of white privilege? What do I think of racism? What do I think of syst- systemic injustice? What do I think about justice? What do I think about Black Lives Matter? All Lives Matter? All What do I believe? What I want to make sure that we're doing as Christians is using our minds and thinking as citizens of heaven who have been called to a higher ethic. The ethic has been laid out for us. The ethic is love. Jesus has said that the greatest commandment is love. So when we engage, the question is, am I engaging out of love the way that God has laid out the way love could look and should look when we're pursuing this higher way? Or am I engaging out of something else? And the out of something else is, I am I engaging out of my right to my opinion? Am I engaging out of my right to be heard? Am I engaging out of fear? Am I engaging out of what I've heard said, but I haven't actually explored it for myself? Am I engaging out of my personal experience that has been defined by the, the, the 10 closest people to me? And when we start to use that as our ethic and ask ourselves the question, what would it look like for me to be a thoughtful Christian who is serving the highest goal is actually serving love? And to serve in love means that we have to determine and have to understand and acknowledge that in all of us, there is going to be a part of us that is not serving out of love for our neighbor as our highest calling, but it's our love of our opinion. It's our love of our right to be heard. It's our love of our people groups that we're comfortable with, all of that kind of stuff. When the enemy was sort of, when when it was defined, when Jesus talks about the enemy, which is not that much, but when he talks about the enemy, he says a couple things. One of the things he says is that the enemy is the father of lies and there is no truth in him. And Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So there is this pursuit of truth that's part of that ethic. Another thing that Jesus says is that the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. In fact, Jesus's work, one of the ways that the work of Christ on the cross is described, I believe it's in Galatians, is that he has destroyed the dividing wall of hostility. And he uses between Jew and Gentile, slave and free, men and women. So this idea that the enemy's desire is to divide, And Jesus, the ethic of Jesus, when we follow Jesus, when we're in Christ, his desire is to unify, to destroy walls of hostility. So you have to look inside of yourself and ask yourself, am I falling for a divisive narrative in my country, in my home, in my world? Is what I'm doing divisive? And I'm not saying that is, this is not a comment on either the right or the left politically, because this happens everywhere, because we live in a world, remember, we're citizens of heaven. We live in a world that is ruled by an enemy whose desire is to be divisive. So if you are a thoughtful person and you're engaging with a higher ethic of love, you have to ask yourself, is the way I'm engaging with this conversation divisive in the sense of, am I not bringing humility to the conversation? This is not just about um, the way that I engage with my black brothers and sisters or any people of color or you know people or indigenous people. This is also about the way I engage with people in my family that I might not agree with. Maybe it's your parents and the way that they view the political scene. Maybe it's your crazy uncle. Maybe, you know, we've got people in our life that you have to ask yourself, don't the enemy, the enemy doesn't see color. What the enemy is looking to do is to provide divisiveness. And anywhere we see divisiveness, where we we create camps, and there's a tribalism of this side, you, us versus them, you versus me, any people group where that happens, that is the work of the enemy. So if you are if you are bound by a higher ethic because you are a citizen of heaven because you are following Jesus Christ your number one call is love. 1 Corinthians says that love is patient, love is kind, love keeps no record of wrongs. 1 Corinthians 13 says love does not rejoice in evil but rejoices with the truth. So there's a part of us that is both truth seeking in one hand but also love seeking in another hand so that the way that we go about engaging the conversation is from a place of love. It's not from a place of divisiveness. And that that goes for all of us. Any one of us can do that. So what we really want to do is ask ourselves, what does it look like to be thoughtful for myself, 
to not just go along with any narrative that I hear, to not just go along with any trend that I see, but to actually be thoughtful in myself with the lens of a higher ethic of love. To be civil in this case is what we're talking about right now. To be civil like this means listening to both sides with openness, including with your family. <laughs> it's, it's being open to the conversation. So yesterday, I went to visit with a friend of mine who is um, a pastor here in Richmond. He's in the urban urban part of Richmond. He's been born and raised here. He's the head of the Richmond School Board. His name's Don Coleman, wonderful man of God. My son, my 17-year-old son, his girlfriend, and myself went to sit on Don's porch and to ask him and to listen to him. And over the last few years, as I've made a more concerted effort to really listen, to ask my friends of color about their experience. You, you you have to have the friends. Like, And I felt ignorant and I've said, hey, I know this might be ignorant. I know this might be offensive. Is it okay if I ask you a question? And I've said, can you explain to me about your experience of race in America, your experience of being black in America? And no matter sort of where they come from, the, the unanimous experience that they have shared with me is a very different experience than I have had. And that gives me pause. That just makes me stop and say, when I have friends who are different than me and I ask them about their experience and they unanimously tell me about experiences that they've had where they have experienced covert or overt racism in some form or fashion throughout their life, when they've experienced what it feels like to not belong, this is a place where I want to move in, not out. I want to listen and learn because God is calling us to unity. He's calling us to break down walls of hostility that exist. And any divisiveness is against God's word. It's That's not what he's calling us to. Now, you may have family members who, or you may have friends, or you may have people, most likely if you're listening to this, you're interested in the conversation, you want to know how to engage. And you may have people who are in a very different place than you in this conversation. So I'm asking you on both sides, are you willing to be open to listening to their experience, to accepting that they may say something that feels offensive to you, that you don't understand, but humility is about putting yourself in a posture of listening and of asking questions, of being interested, of saying, can you explain to me your experience? Can you tell me what you don't understand? That's how we're going to make progress and move forward in this conversation. And there's very, very real conversations to be had. This is this is not just, um, this is a complicated situation. This is a complex environment that we're in right now. This isn't like something that you can weigh in on and you can post something on your social media and maybe you sort of feel better because you feel like you're like, I don't know, like Pastor Don will say to me, like somehow you feel woke because you posted one thing on your social media. That's not what this is about. Like if we want to embrace the moment that we're in, a moment that no one has ever seen in our lifetime, if we want to not just assuage our guilt or kind of get lost in the emotion of it and then not do anything else, then what we want to do right now is two things. The first thing is, is you have got to think for yourself. You have to stop and say, do I believe in what's going on? And for those of you who are Christians, who are believers following along right now, what I'm asking you to do is to make sure that your compass and your true north is scripture, that you go to scripture that you look there and say, okay, what is it that 1 Corinthians 13 is teaching me about love? Am I able to place myself into that narrative? Am I engaging in conversation in my closest relationships out of this ethic of love? And guess what? None of us can do that perfectly. So this is another place of prayer to say, God, would you give me the love that you have? Secondly, am I courageous enough to speak up about what I know is right, but I can do it with love? How do I speak up? And where am I getting my knowledge from? Is it from the media? Is it from any side of the spectrum? Or am I, am I actually going to scripture and saying, what is it that God has to say about justice? What is it that God has to say about the marginalized? What is it that God has to say about humility? Am I engaging in that way? Because one of the things I really believe to be true that is is in culture and in any dynamic in relationships, I talk about this in relationships all the time, in any dynamic in relationships, you need to sit back and ask yourself, who has more power in this situation? 
And I believe that if you are white in America, you are generally in the power position. You have you have had rights and experiences afforded to you that other people haven't. You don't have to feel guilty about that. But you need to understand, I am in a position where my responsibility to the Christian ethic, not to the freedom ethic, not to your right to speech, not to the, not to, uh, the American ethic. Your Christian ethic says that your responsibility is to humble yourself and place yourself in a position where you allow someone who has had less of a voice to have more of a voice. Now, you don't have to just accept that voice without thinking through it. But what you what are you called to, what we're called to as Christians, if that makes sense, is to say in this position, in this dynamic, who has more power here? And wh- whoever has more power, and generally, if you're white in America, you've had more power, you've had more privilege, then you go and say, can I hear from your experience? That's what humility is. I would like to hear about your experience. It doesn't mean that you can solve it. I mean, that's the other thing. Like, we can't fix this problem by posting on social media, but we can start fixing the problem by listening, by learning, by engaging. To me, that is civil disobedience. It's being civil with one another. And I will tell you, I have friends who believe that I am not speaking out enough, and I have friends who believe I'm speaking out too much. We can disagree, and I'm not going to do it right. Like, (laughs) definitely messing it up. Like I'm not going to do it perfectly. And if we're waiting for perfection to be when we start relationships and start conversations, we're all going to just keep doing the same thing that we've been doing because everyone's going to be terrified to speak up. You have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Like you have to be okay with saying like, wow, this is uncomfortable. I feel ignorant or I'm not sure if this is the right way to ask this question and and to receive. But if you're in the power position, I just want to invite you to think about that dynamic anywhere in your leadership, in your relationships, particularly in our people groups. If you're in a position of more power, then the the onus of humility, the responsibility to listen and to be repentant and to hear is on you to position yourself where you can hear from others. That's why I'm not here. If if you want to hear more, I encourage you to listen back to podcasts to David Bailey when David Bailey came onto the podcast and he shared his perspective. He is an expert in racial reconciliation. He's been working in this space for years, for more than 20 years. So we want to listen to those voices. I'm going to post those people for you so you can start listening. But I beg of you, if you have a black friend, I hope you have a black friend. If you have a black friend, even if you're not that close to them, And if you could just make an effort to say, I'm sorry for what is happening in our country, and I would love to hear from you if you're in a position to do so. If you don't have a black friend, at least start following some people on social media just to expand your horizons and pray that God would bring different kinds of people into your world. And while you're at it, because this is a conversation about the Christian ethic, which Jesus says there is an enemy who wants to divide, and Jesus came to renew and unify any people who are different than you. Ask them about their experience. Start to be curious. Start to listen. Start to be humble. We are in a moment of opportunity where your faith can help you see things differently and change the way that you experience relationships and culture and truth. Like We don't have to live superficial, comfortable lives. We can take this moment and say, I don't want to be the same anymore. You can set an intention for the way that you want to engage. I saw that a friend of mine on social media, she just, she just talked to her UPS guy today, and she said, can you tell me about your experience? He was an African-American guy. Now, just you can. someone might say no, they don't want to talk to you. That's okay. If someone says no to you, you're going to survive. You will live. Like You will survive past a no. If you do something wrong or offend someone, you can live and survive past that if your heart is humble and you're in a repentant spirit, then we can actually disagree about how to get things done. We can disagree about how it's going. We can have different viewpoints. But if you're in the power position, the onus is on you to enter in with humility. So for me to be disobedient in this situation, how to be civil and disobedient. To be disobedient to me says we do not ascribe our Christianity and align it with human structures. That's never been the way of Jesus. He has never aligned himself with human structures. That's why this whole idea when he says the kingdom of heaven is among you, the kingdom of heaven is not far from you. You are citizens of heaven. You are co-heirs in Christ. All of that, you are seated in the heavenly realms. I can go on and on. All of that language from scripture is about the idea that we are not of this world system. So if you try to fully align yourself with a system of the world, you are putting into the place where only Christ can go, into the highest love of your heart. And that is a dangerous place to be. 
Because if you're going to ascribe yourself to a human system and that human system is going to fall out of line, what is going to happen then? That's what disobedient means to me in civil. Civil disobedience means I think as a citizen of heaven, I align myself as a follower of Jesus Christ. I hold and ascribe to the highest ideals of Jesus based on his greatest commandment. And that is the way that I engage in relationships. No matter where that takes you on the spectrum, that's a starting point. You just can't, you can't just go to church. You can't just kind of know it. You got to know, you got to go to it and say, what is God showing me and teaching me about justice and about love and about relationships? And how do I engage with that? All right, y'all, I did not, I was not meaning to preach so much, but here we go. I'm going to just check in with you guys on a couple of things. Let's see. Mary Lib says, um, hey, have you read the book White Fragility? Okay, I've, I've recommended White Fragility before. She says, in addition to scripture, this book might be very helpful as we prepare ourselves to have difficult conversations. I've just started it and it's intriguing to me. Absolutely. I think this is a really, really important conversation to have. And if you're interested in kind of engaging in this conversation and continuing, I'm going to give you, I want to point you to resources with people who are actual experts, who really can engage, who've been deeply engaged in this work for a long time. Please know, if you're listening to this, this is not a new problem. We have a, a series of forces that have come together to allow this moment to be. And it is our responsibility as Christians to read the times that we're in and to engage with the times we are in for the opportunity that they present. Because they are presenting you, and all of you guys, everyone on here, you have been presented with an opportunity. Do you want to take it? Are you willing to do the work? We are experiencing a moment in our history that we have never experienced before and may never experience in our lifetime again quite like this. Do you want to keep living this? same way? Or are you willing to engage and ask the question, what would it look like for me to ascribe myself to the highest love? And what might that do in my life? That's the question in front of all of us. That's the question I'm asking myself as well. Thanks you guys for coming. We've loved being together. If you have any questions, you can email me, Nicole at NicoleUnis.com. You can shoot me a DM. I'm so glad you guys were here. We'll post this on the podcast and you can listen back if you'd like. On the show notes, you'll see all of the resources that I want to provide for you. Thanks everyone. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Let's Be Real with Nicole Eunice. We'd love to hear from you. Have a topic to suggest or a tricky situation you need help with? Send us an email or a voice memo to Nicole at NicoleEunice.com and we may feature you on the show. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss an episode.